this year to re-evaluate all COVID-19 vaccines being developed. Welcome to Updates at Noon with me, Brenda LePaul. Now, the Education Ministry, MOE, is conducting an in-depth investigation into the allegation of a female student that went viral on social media claiming that a school teacher had made rape jokes during class. Its minister, Dr. Dr. Razi Jirin, said the MOE took the matter seriously and would not tolerate if the incident really happened. Dan kes ini telah menjadi kes polis. Tapi saya ingin tegaskan kepada umum bahawa kita mengambil serius, kita sedang membuat siasatan yang cukup mendalam untuk melihat keadaan sebenar dan sekiranya didapati terdapat kes, maka tindakan yang sewajarnya dan tindakan yang tegas akan diambil ke atas kes tersebut. The minister was commenting on the issue of a teenage female student who, through the TikTok application, had alleged that a male teacher made rape jokes in class while discussing the issue of sexual harassment during physical education and health subjects at her school. Malaysia will continuously evaluate all types of COVID-19 vaccines being developed, including the nasal spray type for the immunization program. However, Coordinating Minister for the National COVID-19 Immunization Program, Kairi Jamaluddin, said Malaysia currently had made adequate COVID-19 vaccine bookings for the use of the population in the country. That Malaysia has enough uh, vaccines that we have ordered to cover 110% of our population. Um, but if we um, later uh, decide that the nature of the pandemic is that it's endemic, that it's here to stay, then obviously there will be a longer term procurement strategy for vaccines. On phase two of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program, Kairi said 129 vaccination centers, PPV, would be open nationwide at the end of May. Currently, he said 60 PPV had been activated in 12 states, and the states which had conducted the highest vaccination under second phase were Penang, Pahang and Sarawak. The Health Ministry, MOH, will continue to conduct community screenings to detect COVID-19 infections so that control and preventive measures can be taken immediately to prevent the occurrence of large clusters. Its minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Adam Baba, said the MOH was concerned with the increase in COVID-19 cases, especially in Sarawak, Kelantan and Selangor, after the average daily reported COVID-19 cases in the country exceeded 2,500 cases from 20th April. In a statement, the minister said his team would increase screenings using health screening boots in collaboration with private health services and health volunteers, especially in the red zone areas. He said targeted screenings would also be conducted in localities where COVID-19 prevalence exceeds 10% based on concordance tests using the antigen rapid test kit RTK AG. He also said border control and the management of travelers from abroad were also tightened to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and its new variants from entering the country. Perak Menteri Besar Dato' Sarani Mohamad is undergoing quarantine for 14 days after coming into close contact with the COVID-19 patient. Menteri Besar Political Secretary Dato' Shamach Sahad said he received information that Dato' Sarani was told to undergo quarantine until 11th May after having close contact with an individual while attending a program in Lengong. Saya pun dapat maklumat tadi bila majlis buka puasa di hari Jumaat ni di Batu Kurau dia minta saya wakil dia ke sana. Jadi saya tanya kenapa dia kata dia kena kuarantin selama 14 hari kerana close contact dengan positif seorang yang di Lenggong lah di Lenggong. Ha, jadi saya ha, pergi di Lenggong. Jadi saya tak boleh nak cerita banyak rasa tak dapat maklumat yang penuh. He said the Menteri Basa was told to go into a quarantine after chairing the Perak State Executive Council meeting yesterday morning, followed by a media conference at Bangunan Perak Darul Rizwan. 
That's what Sham said. This, after attending the state Nuzul Al Quran 2021 celebration at Sultan Idris Shah II Mosque in Ipo. The viral news of the 50,000 ringgit compound imposed on two sellers in Kota Baru, Kelantan for operating beyond 10 p.m. is not a death penalty, as they are allowed to appeal for a lower amount to the Health Ministry MOH. Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Abdul Hamid Bador said individuals who were compounded for flouting the standard operating procedures (SOP) of the Movement Control Order (MCO) could directly appeal to the MOH for a reduction. Itu bukan hukuman mati. Maknanya kalau sesiapa tu di kompaun begitu, ya, saya dah berkali-kali mengatakan bahawa dia boleh merayu. Ya, dia boleh merayu. Tidak semestinya apabila dia kena tahu akan kesalahan yang dilakukan itu memang mewajarkan PDRM ataupun pengat kuasa yang lain mengeluarkan tawaran kompaun sebegitu rupa. Sama ada yang RM10,000 ke atau RM50,000. Ya. Ia bukan mati di situ. Ya, boleh dirayu. Berikan apakah faktor-faktor yang boleh ia dimaafkan atau dia diringankan jumlah kompaun itu sebut. Recently, a burger seller alleged that he was slapped with the maximum penalty of 50,000 ringgit for operating the burger stall in front of his house at around 11 p.m. Days after the incident, a chole seller was slapped with the same fine for flouting the MCO and operating beyond the 10 p.m. limit. The Blaka Police confirmed that one of its officers of the rank of Deputy Superintendent of Police, DSP, from the Balaka Central Police Headquarters has been arrested by the Johor Police for alleged involvement in the organized crime group, the Niki Gang. Its belief chief, Dato Abdul Majid Muhammad Ali, said they would give full cooperation to the Johor Police in their investigations into the case. <laughs> Mana-mana pegawai dan anggota yang bertugas di Melaka ni sama ada terlibat dalam sindiket jenayah ataupun sindiket rentas padan ni dan saya akan beri kerjasama sepenuhnya kepada polis Johor dan juga polis Haji Malaysia terhadap apa juga siasatan yang melibatkan pegawai dan anggota polis di kontijen ini. Meds after distributing Bubo Lambo in Air Karo, Dato Abdul Majid, however, refused to comment further on the arrest of the 43-year-old officer. On Tuesday, Johor Police Chief Dato Ayahan Maiden Pije announced that 10 police and two Malaysian Anti-Corruption Agency MACC officers suspected of being involved in organized crime activities masterminded by businessman Niki Leo Sun Hee have been detained in several states between 21st and 27th April under Phase 2 of Ops Pelican 3.0. In celebrating the season, only 36 types of fireworks, such as pop-pop and happy boom varieties, will be allowed for sale during Hari Raya Idol Fitri 2021 celebrations. Bukit Aman Management Department Administration Deputy Director Dato Mat Kasim Karim said the sale must comply with the rules set by the Royal Malaysia Police PDRM. 
In a statement, Dato Mat Kasim said, some of the conditions that must be complied with by small traders, retailers and supermarkets are that the seller is a Malaysian citizen, owning a business license containing a list of happy boom and pop-up fireworks, and must be displayed for the purpose of inspection and enforcement by the authorities. The sale period is only allowed for 30 days, subject to the approval and discretion of the police commissioner or state police chief. Transactions online or through any social media application are not allowed, as well as at restaurants, eateries, or to buyers below 18 years old. He said in violation of the stipulated conditions, legal action could be taken under Section 8 of the Explosives Act 1957, Act 207, which could result in a jail term of seven years or a fine of 10,000 ringgit or both. In other news, Proton Holdings Berhad's finance arm, Proton Commerce Sundir and Berhad, is aiming to disperse an all-time high of 20,000 loans this year after the local car manufacturer recorded the highest cumulative sales in the first quarter since March 2012. Proton Commerce Chief Executive Officer Mui Fi Pang said the company is confident to grow the volume of loan disbursement in second quarter after seeing loan disbursement volume for first quarter increased by 42.5%. 3%. In a statement, Mui said Proton Commerce is also seeing a change in the demographics of its customers with the age of buyers trending downwards, indicating the company's revamped lineups has made it a more trendy choice with younger Malaysians. He said 80% of Proton Commerce customers opted for nine year higher purchase financing plans and that impact loan rates up to three times lower than the industry average. Proton Commerce disbursed a total of 5,410 loans in 2018, which nearly doubled to 10,668 the following year, while in 2020, it disbursed 14,189 loans. Yet to come. Turkey secures 50 million Sputnik V COVID vaccine. There are more coming up in a front second. But first, mass cremations were held in India for victims who died from the COVID-19 and graveyard workers said they were running out of space as the country struggled to cope with the massive spike in deaths. Some distraught relatives claim they were neither allowed to meet their loved ones for one last time, nor were the authorities doing enough to ensure the safety of family members of those who died from the coronavirus disease. In the Indian capital, New Delhi, one death from COVID-19 was being reported every four minutes and ambulances have been taking the bodies of victims to makeshift crematorium facilities in parks and parking lots where bodies burn on rows of funeral pyres. The second wave of infection has seen at least 300,000 people tested positive each day for the past week, overwhelming health facilities and crematoriums and prompting an increasingly urgent response from allies overseas, sending equipment. The last 24 hours brought 360,960 new cases for the world's largest single day toll, taking India's tally of infections to nearly 18 million. While the death toll from the coronavirus surge passed 200,000 yesterday, the country's deadliest day. However, experts believe the official tally vastly underestimates the actual toll in a nation of 1.35 billion. Meanwhile, Britain will provide India with three mobile oxygen factories to support the country's battle against its second wave of COVID-19 infections. Minister for Middle East and North Africa, James Cleverly, said the mobile facility can provide 1,500 litres of oxygen per minute. Well, India is a long -standing... Cleverly added that Britain would continue to provide support to India in its fight against the coronavirus. He also said British Prime Minister Boris Johnson would be speaking with India's Narendra Modi in the coming days. Earlier this week, Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said a shipment of 600 items, including ventilators and oxygen concentrator devices, were to be shipped to India this week. 
Britain will buy 60 million more doses of Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine in a deal that more than doubles the country's supply of the shot ahead of a booster program later this year. Britain has now ordered a total of 100 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine, which is one of three COVID-19 shots being rolled out in the country at the moment. Health Minister Matt Hancock said the shots had been secured with a view to supporting a COVID-19 booster vaccination program starting in the autumn, adding that the biggest risk to Britain's vaccine rollout so far was a new variant of the coronavirus. Britain has no surplus of COVID-19 vaccines to give to India as it faces a deadly wave of coronavirus that puts intense pressure on hospitals. Hancock added that Britain will never impose export restrictions on the exports of pharmaceutical products made in the country. Britain said it has never blocked vaccine exports in the face of demands from the European Union and that the AstraZeneca vaccine made in Britain is used to supply its EU contract. Hancock also said England is on track for the next stage of lifting the lockdown restrictions next month. Indoor service in pubs and restaurants will be allowed from 17 May at the earliest, according to the government's roadmap out of lockdown. Turkey has signed a deal for 50 million doses of Russia's Sputnik V COVID-19 vaccine, which will start arriving next month. Its health minister, Fahretin Kocha, said the deal will help to address a short-term fall in supply, which Kocha warned will be scarce in the coming two months. Turkey has until now been using COVID-19 vaccines developed by China, Sinovac, Biotech and Pfizer and BioNTech. The country has carried out 22 million inoculations, with 13.55 million people having received a first dose. Russian Direct Investment Fund, RDIF, earlier this week said a Turkish pharmaceutical firm will produce Sputnik V COVID-19 vaccine at its plants. As of June, Turkey has also decided to administer the two doses of BioNTech vaccine at six to eight week intervals versus the previous gap of 28 days. The health minister also said five people have been diagnosed with the COVID-19 variant first identified in India, adding that the cases were isolated and being monitored. Brazilians due to receive a second dose of a coronavirus vaccine developed by China's Sinovac Biotech were turned away at a Rio de Janeiro vaccination center as concerns mount that supply delays will derail the country's immunization program. According to a new calendar released by the country's health minister last week, the Brazilian government cut by nearly 30 percent the number of COVID-19 vaccines expected to be delivered between January and April. Last month, former Health Minister Eduardo Pazuello said Brazil would receive roughly 103 million doses in the first four months of the year. However, the latest calendar released by Health Minister Marcelo Quiroga showed only 73 million doses. The government said the reduction was due to lower than expected volume of active ingredients received and also because some vaccines are pending a permit to be used in the country. A major supply of vaccines to Brazil is China's Sinovac Biotech and its Coronavac vaccine. But with the reported efficacy rate of just 50.4% preventing symptomatic infections in a Brazilian trial, many are concerned that a delay in getting second doses of Coronavac could put locals who have already been vaccinated at risk. Brazil has the world's second highest coronavirus death toll after the United States. Protesters clash with security forces in Colombia's capital in a march against President Ivan Duque's controversial proposed tax reforms. The clashes took place after thousands gathered in answer to calls from Colombia's biggest unions to march against a suite of new or expanded taxes on individuals and businesses. Unions insisted the strike will go ahead despite a court order to postpone the protests of concerns about a third coronavirus peak that is stretching the health system to breaking point. The proposed tax reform was originally meant to raise about $6 billion, equivalent to 2% of gross domestic product GDP, but officials said this target could be lowered in a bid to build consensus among lawmakers. 
Wednesday's protests are the most recent in a series of marches, which began near the end of 2019, against the social and economic policies of President Ivan Duque, who leaves office next year. But first, more than half of the 120 players at the Academy Badminton Malaysia ABM in Bukit Kera, Kuala Lumpur will be given a break from training to help check the spread of COVID-19 at the training centre. Badminton Association of Malaysia BAM President Tan Sri Muhammad Norza Zakaria said he had told BAM Secretary General Dato Kenigo to excuse players not involved in the Road to Tokyo programme those still seeking Olympic qualification, and several juniors going for a tournament in Slovenia soon. Tanjiri Mohamed Norza said these players were expected to return to their homes before checking back into the training center after the Idol Fitri celebration. Saya juga telah berbincang dengan uh, Datuk Kenny semalam untuk beliau uh, uh, mengkaji uh, tentang keutamaan uh, bukan bukan uh, memberi peluang training kepada kesemuanya kerana kita harus belajar daripada apa yang berlaku baru-baru uh, 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 ini yang telah menyebabkan penularan ke dalam ABM ya uh, kerana sebelum itu kita tahu ABM adalah salah satu model uh, gelembung ataupun uh, tempat yang mengutamakan SOP yang begitu ketat tapi bila kita buka sikit uh, ruang tersebut uh, uh, kita unfortunately uh, malangnya ada di antara pemain kita telah membawa masuk uh, COVID di dalam komuniti uh, uh, BAM tersebut Tan Sri Mohamad Noza, who is also Olympic Council of Malaysia OCM President, had earlier received a courtesy visit by the new EXCO of the Sports Writers Association of Malaysia for 2020 to 2023, led by its president, Noris Madi Abdul Mana. National payers only returned to training at ABM on Tuesday after a week's break because 15 individuals at the academy had tested positive for COVID-19 since 17 April. With that, we conclude today's updates at noon in our top story, Malaysia to reevaluate all COVID-19 vaccines being developed. Now join us again at 10 p.m. for news at 10 on my free view, Southern Berita, RTM Channel 123. You can also stream the channel via YouTube or RTM Click, web portal and mobile app. I'm Brendan LePaul. Thanks for watching.